Hey, 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 you guys. Joss at the ad here in Singapore. And thank you once again for joining me on the Night Owl podcast. You guys, I really do appreciate you joining me on this. There's plenty of feedback going back and forth about the last couple of episodes I've done. And yeah, it's a little bit, you know, touch and throw. There are some things that I say I probably... I'm pretty sure some of you will not agree with. And that's okay because this is just an opinion. This is not a fact. This is just an opinion, my perspective, from my point of view, from where I'm sitting. So if you have more to share, please, by all means, because I am open to hearing other points of view. Now, we were going through this list that Create the Love had created a while back, talking about avoiding your own healing and the many ways that we do avoid our own healing. Now, we talked about dating projects. And we talked about how sometimes we take on the responsibility for other people's feelings, which means the focus is on the other person. It's no longer on ourselves, which also means if it's not on us, we don't have a chance to process what we're going through, right? So the next one on the list is when you obsess over other people's stuff and how they've messed you up, how they've hurt you, and it feels like it's on purpose, that victim feeling, right? Now, again, this is the fact that you're focusing on other people and not on yourself. Because let's face it, it takes two hands to clap. But if you're only going to focus on how they screwed you over, you're never going to see how you could maybe draw a line so they never do it again. You're never going to see how you could maybe speak up and tell tell the other person, hey, this hurt my feelings and I don't want you to do this again. I need for you to understand how important this matter is, how much it hurt me, how much it traumatized me, how much it was reminiscent of another trauma that I experienced. So when you're focused on everybody else and the things that they continually do to you, you don't get a chance to sit with yourself and say, okay, where am I not drawing boundaries? Where am I not being clear with what I want and what I don't want? Have I had a chance to be clear with what I want and what I don't want? Because I happen to be of the belief that the world is not against you, but it also matters that you stand up for yourself. Now, growing up, I didn't believe that I had a choice. I didn't think I could stand up for myself because that usually ended up in me being beaten down or yelled at or punished or some craziness, right? But the point being that if I don't stand up and say something, they're not going to understand to which extent it hurts me. Now, I've been in several situations since I've grown up a little bit and uh, been in relationships where I didn't feel like I, I could speak up for myself either. And I would focus on what they were doing wrong to me and could not see that I was not either enabling them or allowing them to do something that was hurtful, or making them react in such a way that it hurt me, right? Sometimes we've seen situations where people will, um, what is that word, instigate and instigate and instigate until you have no choice but to flip out, and then when you flip out, suddenly, oh my God, how dare you? I can't believe you did this to me. How could you respond like this, right? So it takes two hands to clap, and if you realize that, then you will see, you'll be able to look for, okay, well, where did I not say what I needed to say? Where did I figure it was safer to keep silent and so I didn't say what I needed to say at the time and so they took it as, oh, well, this is okay behavior because you did not correct me. That's also a possibility. So as much as I would like to say that, you know what, you can't be in victim mentality, it's easier said than done. You need to realize the fact that every one of our actions has an equal and opposite reaction. It causes someone to do something else and that comes from their trauma and the way we behave comes from our trauma and it's up to us to figure out, okay, Well, if I don't want that to happen ever again, what is it that I can do to make sure it doesn't happen again, right? You have to be able to stand up for yourself. And a lot of times when we focus on the hurt that was caused to us, we don't get a chance to look at, okay, well, what did I do that allowed this to happen? That made the other person feel like it was okay or justified for them to react the way that they did. So as much as this is not a fun topic to talk about, because people will have all kinds of things to say about both sides of this story, I still want to talk about it. I still want to be able to to figure out, okay, well, how can we make this discussion a little bit louder? Because this is something that needs to be had in every household. If I were to sit here with my daughter and uh, correct her on her math, she suddenly gets an attitude because she doesn't like being corrected. If I was not self-aware enough to see that I'm the one who corrected her and she feels some kind of way about it, I wouldn't be able to see that, okay, well, maybe the way I corrected her had some kind of an effect. Maybe there's a better way to do this. But in order for me to understand that I could affect her reaction, I need to know a little bit about myself. I need to be aware that, okay, I could be doing something wrong with all the best intentions, but still be wrong. Uh, It still comes down to those five love languages. She is a words of affirmation person. So anything that sounds like you did this wrong, even if it's filled with flowery language and lots of hugs, she's still going to feel some kind of way about it. So my whole idea is I need to find a way where she sees it as a fun constructive way of working on things so if it's an experiment oh my god this doesn't work let's try this instead it's not so bad 
and she doesn't feel so affected she doesn't feel like it's personal attack on her because i'm making it about the problem itself if we try one path and it doesn't work let's try another path and see if that works instead so it becomes an adventure and that works for her it may not work for anybody else but i know my kid she likes words of affirmation she likes to be congratulated on trying she likes to be reinforced with what did go right versus what didn't and honestly all of our schooling experiences are based on what didn't go right how many marks out of how many? But we're focused on the amount of mistakes you made, not on how many you got right. Got it? So this is where I'm talking about. You need to know yourself very well. You need to understand the five love languages because the way you speak to other people has an effect on them. Maybe people don't understand you know, words so much, but some people really get affected over being ignored. I, gosh, it hurts my heart when I'm being ignored and I can't stand it because suddenly I don't feel like I belong in that space i feel like hard rejection because it's something that my mom used to do when i was younger when she wanted to punish me when she realized that yelling didn't make it any better because i would yell back when she realized hitting didn't make it any better because i got strong enough to withstand all of the hitting eventually she'd just ignore me and that hurt more than anything else because i love my mom i want to be around her but when we argue man or when we in a disagreement that cold war feeling sucks So she realized eventually, and this was way after the fact, when I was grown and I finally had a chance to sit down and talk to her, she realizes that I need her to tell me what she's feeling in the moment. So I understand where she's coming from because when she's silent, I feel the silence with all of my imagined responses and ideas, which does not help me because it's far from the truth. I'm guessing at what she's feeling. So if she can verbalize what she's feeling without screaming at me, obviously, without condemning me, but to just say what she's feeling, then I have a chance to really talk to her and discuss what the options are so that she doesn't feel hurt and I don't feel hurt either. But it really matters how I communicate with her and how she communicates with me. So in this regard, I really do believe it matters how you deal with other people. If you focus on what they're doing wrong, you're forgetting the part that you did something or you are somehow that they felt the need to react that way. Obviously, they want some kind of attention or they want some kind of control over a situation. And if you, quietly rebelling, forces them to scream, yell, rant, rave, throw, hit, punch, I don't know, you need to figure out how you can change that behavior or you have no choice but to suffer through it. Then you are victim of the situation because you've decided you have no control. I don't want anyone to ever feel helpless. I felt helpless so many times in my life. And that's why I'm actually talking about some of these things. So if you have any other ways of coping, if you have any other ways that feel better or smarter to deal with this, please, by all means, drop me comments. I want to know. But at the moment, this is what I feel based on my experiences, based on the way I've dealt with things. I know when clients come to me, I really make sure to hone in on how does the other person like to be loved? Do you know? What triggers them? Why does it trigger so badly? If you don't know the trigger, what is it that you do that suddenly they react this way? Because you know, right? And at that point, what can you do differently so that it doesn't happen this way ever again? So if you have any questions, please drop me a line. But in the meantime, you guys, be kind to each other. Give yourself a little grace and know you do have control, okay? You are not a victim of anything. You do have a measure of control. As scary as it might be, you can take control, okay? I love you guys. I'll catch you later. Bye.